the early treatment of atrial fibrillation for stroke prevention trial re-examined the role of modern rhythm control therapy in the management of patients with AF and cardiovascular conditions. East AF 4 randomized 2,789 patients in 135 sites with a Chatsvask score of two or more and with recently diagnosed AF, having either the first episode or being within a year of uh, the first diagnosis of AF at randomization to either usual care, guideline comfort management, or to early rhythm control. All patients received anticoagulation, treatment of concomitant conditions, and rate control. In usual care, rhythm control was limited to patients who were symptomatic on optimal rate control. In early therapy, every patient received rhythm control therapy at randomization, either an antiarrhythmic drug or AF ablation. We followed all patients for um, a median of 5.1 years, and we found the following. The first primary outcome, a composite of stroke cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure or acute coronary syndrome, occurred in 249 patients randomized to early rhythm control, corresponding to an incidence rate of 3.9% per year. This was 21% lower than the 316 patients who experienced the first primary outcome randomized to usual care at an incidence rate of 5% per year. A highly significant difference. The second primary outcome of the trial was nights spent in hospital. And the good news for payers is that early rhythm control therapy, unlike rhythm control therapy in prior trials, did not increase nights spent in hospital. We had a few two-year outcomes, including left ventricular function, cognitive function, quality of life, and they were equal between groups. It's actually quite remarkable um, to know that 73% of patients in usual care were asymptomatic, almost identical to the 74% of patients in early rhythm control who were asymptomatic. More patients in early rhythm control were in sinus rhythm at two years, but 60% of those randomized to usual care were in sinus rhythm at the two years visit. We did not find safety signals. There were fewer strokes and numerically fewer deaths in patients randomized to early rhythm control. There were more serious adverse events related to rhythm control therapy in those randomized to early rhythm control, but they were few. 68 patients over the five year follow up in early rhythm control and 19 in usual care. In conclusion, we have a new answer to an old question. Early rhythm control therapy improves cardiovascular outcomes in patients with early AF and cardiovascular conditions. This clinical benefit comes without an increase in nights spent in hospital and without safety concerns. Therefore, in my view and in our view, as the many people who did the trial, rhythm control therapy should be offered to all patients with early AF and concomitant cardiovascular conditions.